Hey everyone, my name is Justin, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create the double exposure effect in Photoshop. Before we start, I wanna make it clear that choosing the right photos is about half of the work in this effect. And it doesn't matter how good your technique is if you're trying to blend two photos that don't really work well together. So jumping into Photoshop, you can see I'm using this close-up side profile photo and then a photo of this desert dune. Now a lot of times when you see this tutorial being done you'll notice that the photo they use is already on a white background but I think this photo is a bit more realistic to something that you might be working with that's gonna have a background and we're gonna need to cut it out. In most cases you should be able to just use the quick selection tool for a fast and easy selection. Make sure it's set on add to selection mode and then choose a brush size that's decently big compared to your object. Now we're just gonna brush in our selection and Photoshop should automatically detect the edges and make a pretty decent selection. Now as you can see, the hair in this object is a little too fine to select and also we have some gaps in between the arm and the face that I wanna remove. So once I have the bulk of my selection, I wanna set my tool to subtract from selection mode and then maybe turn the brush size down to fill in those gaps and now we're gonna remove those gaps. Now you can see our selection is still a little bit choppy around the edges so that's where we're gonna head over to the Refine Edge tool to clean up our selection. Working with the Refine Edge brush and setting your size to something about reasonable for the edges of your photo, you wanna brush in those choppy edges such as the hair and parts where things aren't cut out so well. And you'll see that Photoshop automatically blends things in and captures those fine details. If you ever go too far, you can use the Erase Selection tool to bring back your original selection. Also, you can adjust the radius of the entire edge as a whole in the Refine Edge menu here, and you can do things like smooth, feather it, and shift the edge inward or outward to get a more accurate selection for your image. Once you're happy with that, press OK, and you should have a more refined selection, and then you wanna just right click and layer via copy. Now that we have this on our own layer, go ahead and click on your background layer and go to Layer, New Fill Layer, Solid Color. So this is where we're going to use a bright silver, almost white color, as you typically see in this effect. Press OK, and then head over to Filter, Lens Correction. Go ahead and convert the layer to a smart object, and then head over to the Custom tab, and under the Vignette bar, you want to darken it up a little bit. I'm also going to turn the midpoint up a little bit, and you'll see that this will darken up the corners to give us a little bit more lighting in our backdrop. Go ahead and press OK when you're happy with your settings. If you want to move your person or object, you can easily do that now that it's cut out on its own layer, so you could place it more in the center if you like. And you can also go to Edit, Free Transform, and make it bigger or smaller if you like. So I'll make it a little bigger. And now we want to drag in our photo of our nature or city that we've selected. So I'm going to drag in my desert, and you can see the sizes of things are a little bit off. So I'll press my Command T shortcut to open up my Free Transform menu, and then holding Shift to constrain proportions, I'll make this big enough so that it covers my entire person, and press Enter when I'm done. Now you want to create a clipping mask to apply this layer directly within the bounds of the cutout that you made. So you can use the shortcut Option Command G, or go to Layer, Create Clipping Mask. This will place this layer within the cutout, and now we can play around with blending modes and placement. So some of the best blending modes to use for this are just normal, screen, or multiply. I'm actually gonna use a combination of screen and normal at different opacities to create my effect. So if you're on normal blending mode, you can actually turn the opacity down, and then you wanna adjust the placement to something that works well for your photo. If you notice, the curve of this sand dune actually matches up with the curve of her eye and the bridge of her nose nicely. So I'm gonna use that as my placement, but you can find an interesting placement for your photo to help things blend. For this first layer, I'm gonna set the blending mode to screen and play around with the opacity till it's something that I like. So I'll use 50%. Next, I'm just gonna duplicate this layer. I'll use my clipping mask shortcut, or you could go to layer, create clipping mask. And then I'm gonna set this one to normal and I'm gonna create a layer mask. So if I go to layer, layer mask, hide all, I'm gonna be able to paint in the parts that I want to show more strongly on the normal blending mode. So I'll turn the opacity up to about 80%. And as you can see, since our layer mask is entirely black, the entire image is hidden right now and we only see what's underneath. But if I grab my paintbrush tool and I use a soft round brush at a decently large size for my canvas, I can start painting in white 
the areas that I want to bring out. So with white as my foreground color and my layer mask highlighted, I can paint in the areas that I want to be more visible in normal blending mode. So I think this texture of the sand dune at the bottom is pretty cool. And I'll also bring out some of the sky that's being hidden right now. So as you can see, this second layer on normal blending mode just helps us tie in the edges and blend the photos a little bit more. Next, I'm gonna use the same technique for our original cutout layer to help blend it into the background as well. So I'll grab my original cutout, I'll go to layer, layer mask, and this time I'll select reveal all. So as you can see, the layer mask starts out white, which means that everything is showing. And this time I'll paint in black some areas that I wanna hide. So a cool technique that you'll often see is that the head disappears into the background or some parts of the image disappear into the background. And that, since the sky is so light and the background is so light, I can kind of blend these edges to sell the illusion a little bit more along the arm and some of the head. So as you can see, I just painted in black on those areas that I wanted to hide and make disappear a bit. And we've created a little bit more blending along the skyline of the desert photo and the portrait. Luckily for me, my two photos work together in color, but a lot of times you'll notice that the two colors of your layers just don't blend well together. And that's why you'll see a lot of people decide to make this effect black and white. So at this point, you can go to layer, new adjustment layer, black and white, and select OK. And you'll notice that it ties things in a lot better when there's no color because you can't distinguish the two photos as well. Since my photo actually looked good in color, I'm gonna capitalize on that and I'll just turn the opacity of this black and white layer down to about 25%. So really I just desaturated and blended the colors a bit, but you can still see the brown of the sand and her skin tones as well. Finally, you can tie in everything together by adding a little bit of contrast and color by going to layer, new adjustment layer, curves. For my photo, a little bit of contrast will work well, so I'll bring down the shadows a bit, and then I'll bring up the highlights a bit, creating a slight S-curve, as you see here. Next, you can head over to one of your color channels, like blue, and if you just lift the blues in the shadows, you can see that it gives your entire photo that blue shadowed look. Also, if you drag the blues out of the highlights, it'll give it that yellow tint. So if you did apply a full black and white layer, this is a good way to add some monochromatic color. You can also apply this layer masking technique onto the screened layer if there's any blocking of important elements of your original portrait, like a hand or an, a pupil. So if I actually go over to my screened blending mode here, I can go to layer, layer mask, reveal all, and then just grab my black brush on a soft round and small size and get rid of that line that's kind of visually breaking things up. I'll do that on both of the layers actually and you can see that that helps sell the effect. So continue to play around with the placements and settings until you have a final image that you're happy with. If you guys did enjoy this tutorial definitely subscribe to my channel for weekly Photoshop tutorials and you can also find the written version of this tutorial on my website justasgood.com which I'll link below for you as well as the PSD for this document so you can flip through all the layers and see how I did it. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.